I think you get the idea. Okay, first thing you're going to want to do is open up your After Effects. Now for this tutorial, I'm only going to be showing you part of it just to uh, get it so that you understand the concept. Um, because if I go through and I map everything through, it's going to be over a half an hour for this animation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the first part and how to do it. And that will give you the basics on how this is done. Um, you know, I don't, I don't want you to have to sit here for half an hour. Uh, later on, if people start watching my videos and they want to sit here for half an hour and they ask me to make longer videos, more detailed videos, I got no problem with that. But the first thing you're going to have to do is take a video file and throw it into your projects area. <clears throat> then what you're going to do is make your composition the size of your video by taking it down here and putting it there and then pull it down here to your work area and this shows you your composition area your capture well it's mine's called capture uh, yeah all right so what a lot of people do is they rename these right away and we'll just call this movie There we go movie one all right so basically what you're gonna want is you're gonna want to ram drive this so that you get to the work area that you're gonna be doing all right that's good enough all right guys be Jeff and that was the intro all right let me drag this properly so you guys can see most everything I'm doing. Alright, first thing we're going to do is scrub over here to where my hand goes up. And I'm going to hit, I'm going to select this, this movie layer. And I'm going to hit B for beginning. That's where we're going to start working from. And what we're going to basically do is we're going to add a another layer a new layer solid right there we'll name the solid lightning okay and we'll call it lightning one because we're gonna have more than one lightning I'm gonna take you probably through two lightnings but in this actual thing there's four lightnings um, there's four lightnings and certain effects at the end but what you're gonna learn today is you're gonna learn the basics of the what's called obsolete lightning but it looks really good on the fingers um, here we go so first thing we're gonna want to do is double this layer so you select it and then do a control D and you've doubled the layer now what you're going to want to do is shorten these layers to where they start and you do that by hitting alt left end bracket and then select the next layer and do alt left end bracket <clears throat> now I realize in your composition you're not seeing anything here right now because the solid is an actual solid texture that you cannot see through um, until you make it see through so just imagine that you've got a layer of film and then you've got a solid block on top of it and another solid block on top of that. You can't see through the blocks yet, but we're going to make them see through. First thing you want to do is add effects to these layers. I've got this one selected in the middle and I'm going to add obsolete, let's see, obsolete lightning. I'm going to add another obsolete lightning. There we go. Now we've got two obsolete lightnings. Um, we can see one of the lightnings because it's on top. Remember, it's a solid. So it's like a solid with a picture on it. And what we're going to do is go over here to right where my mouse key is. And we're going to hit this and this. Now what we did is we just made both of these layers adjustment layers so that you can see through them but you can still see the effects that are in them if that makes any sense I hope it does 
Uh, first thing we're going to want to do is before we even start timing stuff, we're going to take this start and end, and then we're going to click on the screen basically to let it loose where it is. See, I move that lightning. Now I'm going to go over and open up this effects right on lightning one and I'm gonna open up lightning and hit the start point see what that did now I've got two red a start in the beginning and I'm gonna pull these over here and this is before the animation really even starts that just all of a sudden appeared all right, um, one thing I want to do, I just noticed I'm going to close this up and I'm going to go rename this Lightning 2. And I do that by right clicking and hitting rename. And then I'll click inside there again and just change that to 2. So now you've got two different layers. You'll be able to tell them apart by their names. <coughs> All right, now what we're going to do is select one of these layers. And then we're going to open up the start point and the end point to that layer. We're going to select this layer. We're going to open up the start point and the end point to that layer. Now that is the effect for the lightning. Where it's going to start and where it's going to end. You have two of them so you're going to watch both. What you do basically is you start moving forward by using next frame button right here and you map the lightning as you want it when you're moving forward. So basically step forward, map, your keyframes will be automatically put in because you have um, your start watch and end point on a stopwatch right now. So then you go up here and you say you click one of these, it will not show it. So what you have to do is once you've selected this, open up the lightning two, go to the effects and go to lightning and then click inside there and you'll see the end and the start are visible and you can move them. Then frame forward, a couple frames, and move your start and end as you're moving forward. So frame forward, all right, and then what you can do is look and see which one you're on you're on lightning two right now you want to go to lightning one which is underneath select that and I'm gonna open up the lightning on that and select that point there we go just checking to see where it is and it looks pretty good where it is maybe I'll put this here and move forward move the start and the end Okay, there we go. Let, let me go back here. Move this end here. There we go. Alright, now we're going to have to switch from 1 to 2 on the lightning. Click the start point and then they'll be visible again. There we go. All right, went too far. Just do one, there we go. Move this one and this one. Then I'm gonna go select number one again. Number one, select. Move this one and this one. All right, so I'm gonna go real quick here and show you what we've got so far. All right, that's to where we're up to. Actually, I'm going to move this frame, the start and the end of this. So that matches up better. 
I'm going to go select number two, which is on top. Hit the start point, and I'm going to move that better. There we go. Move forward and do the same thing. Now I'm going to go select. Let's see, I like putting them on the fingertips if you can. Just gives them that elegant power look. I'm going to select the start point for the other one. And I'm going to put it on this fingertip. There we go. Step forward. And go select the other one real quick and do the same thing. You see it's kind of monotonous. You're, you're basically going through all these little moves to get the same thing done. And as you move through it, the animation will look more realistic. You can put more keys in to get more realistic movement. Let me go select the other one real quick. All right, let's scrub through this and see what we got so far. There we go. Let me put this here. Go select the other layer. Oh, and if that happens, just hit your composite composition so that you can see again happens to be a lot because I have a very sensitive gaming mouse there we go and I'm going to go select the other layer Now we start to move and throw the lightning to the other hand. Now what I like to do too is kind of make it just wild as it's being thrown. There we go. So let's see what that looks like so far. And there you have the basics now what you would do is just keep on doing the same thing it'll land over on the other hand and you keep moving forward moving your core and your end with your keyframes now if you haven't picked up your keyframes are at the bottom here right where my mouse is that's every time you move a step forward because you have the stopwatch on it leaves a keyframe and says okay this is the spot where it was so that's our how-to for today. I'm going to finish this up and render it for my intro and put some other nice stuff in there so that we can do another how-to in a week or so. All right, guys, thanks for watching.